In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the data analysis tool pack to automatically create a bar chart of the data that we have. Now we have both height data and weight data. Uh, we're going to graph height and weight separately. Uh, but there are a few things that we have to take care of before we actually create the, uh, the bar chart. And that is this. Whenever bar charts are created, the x-axis has labels along it. And those labels oftentimes are grouped ranges for a set of scores along the x-axis. In our case, we're going to have to do the same thing. But the decision process on how big to make any particular X label range follows a fairly standard process in the field of statistics. That process is the number of labels you want on the X axis should be somewhere between 15 to 20. And to know how many we should create, one of the things we have to do is to go look at the descriptive statistics that we've already calculated for height and weight and make some decisions about the size of the labels. So we'll get started there and then we'll move on to make the graph itself. If we're working with height, we can go to the calculated answers tab and when we get there, we'll see the information for height that we already collected. In this set of descriptive statistics, the minimum and maximum values that we had already calculated previously it, with this set of data shows that no height is uh, less than 53 inches and no height is greater than 77 inches. So we have a range that for easy numbers we could use from 50 up to 80. And from 50 to 80, that of course would be a range of 30 total scores. That's a bit much for what we want to do. And you see there's a little bit of guesswork here about how many we actually need. Um, if we used half that amount, we'd have 15. And 15 labels on the x-axis would be reasonable. So if we choose every score between 50 and 80 and go up by sets of two, then we'll know what our label range should actually be. We have to create this set of labels on the, uh, on the height weight data sheet before we get started. Now to do so is a fairly simple matter. Uh, as you have learned previously, if you uh, put in numbers like 50, 52, 54, then select them and drag them down with the little box on the bottom right hand corner. You can drag it down and that ghosted box that follows you down will show you when you reach 80, which is the upper limit we want to go to. And that gives us a set of labels from 50 down to 80. This set of numbers is necessary to complete first before we use our data pack add-in function. Now that we have it, we can go create a histogram very rapidly with our um, data analysis tool pack. So to do so, go to the data tab at the top of the page, slide over and find data analysis. When you click on data analysis, we have previously used descriptive statistics, but now what we want is his is histogram. You can see there's many different options. Histogram is going to automatically graph the height data for us. So when we tell it OK, it's going to ask for some basic information. For example, what is the input range that we're using? Well, we're using the height data. So we can go to the top of the height data, use Control Shift down arrow, and because we know that we already clicked on non-numeric information, the, the data label at the very top, we should check off the labels column. Now we want to locate our bin range. The bin range are the numbers that we just created from 50 to 80. So we'll select that. That's now in bin range. 
And then uh, we want to place the output range somewhere. And the output range, when we click into this, we just need to find a cell to place it. And we're going to place it here at E2. And be sure as the final step to mark off chart output because that will automatically create the graph we need. And with all these selections completed, we can now hit OK. And what we see is automatically a histogram that shows up for the height data. Uh, now we can uh, click on this figure and uh, we could drag it to make it a little bit larger. Uh, of course, uh, the proper label for the X axis is not 50, but these are uh, labels for height. So this is height in inches. There we go. And the frequency is the correct uh, label for the Y axis in this particular case because what this is showing is the number of scores for people that were between, for example, uh, 54 to 56 inches. And that would be the height here. Or the number of people that were between 66 and 68 inches right along this column. And there's just about 100 of them altogether. And that, uh, that takes care of uh, this information. Uh, it would be good to, uh, to change our top label in this particular case. Uh, these are height data, of course. And that makes it very convenient to, uh, to make a graph uh, from a histogram using that tool pack function. Uh, to do this otherwise by hand would be very slow, very laborious. Now we're going to do the exact same thing but with weight. So I'll take this graph, we're going to shrink it up just to make it small and convenient to deal with on the, on the sheet. And now we're going to do the same thing with weight. Um, one hint, I'm not going to go through all the steps, I'm just going to come back when the weight figure is actually made. However, if we come down to calculated answers and go back and look at the minimum and maximum range in this case for, for weight, we see that uh, of all our scores, no one weighs less than 85 pounds and no one um, uh, weighs more than 330. So uh, with these data, because we want to keep 20 total values, we know we have a range here, a range of 245 scores from 85 up to 330. And uh, we want to have about 20 labels if we can. So to do a little bit of math, very simply, in Excel, we can place equals, and we can say 245, that's our range, divide that by the total number of bins that we want, hit enter, and that would be about 12. So 12 to 13. Let's just work with 12 because it's a nice even number. So when we come back to the height weight data sheet, what we're going to do is make a set of scores that start off from the lowest value that we're going to work with, uh, which is about 80. And then we're going to go to the next value, which would be 92, because we've increased by 12. Uh, the next value, of course, would be 104. And we want to have this set of data be increased all the way to the maximum number of uh, scores that we had. And we want to reach 330 maximum. Our labels we see in the small ghosted box at 332, and that sets us up uh, to take care of the labels for weight. And that will do it. Going through the steps again for weight without showing them, I was able to create the labels that we needed uh, running from about 80 to 332. Uh, as bins of 12 units apiece. Then I use the tool pack histogram function to generate the set of frequencies of each score in the set. So for example, um, with a weight of 140 pounds, 
uh, we can look at this bar and goes all the way up. It's actually the highest bar in the entire uh, set of data, which is somewhere around 95. But if we actually look at that set here, uh, 140, uh, we see, here we go, uh, it actually is 95 right there. So if we wanted the height of the bar anywhere in this figure, we can automatically pull out the exact value from the table. This information, the, uh, this histogram information, is going to be necessary for you to use to calculate your relative standing in the class in both height and weight and to place that information later into the calculated answers web sheet where you place uh, your relative standing, where your height is, where your weight is relative to everyone else in the class.